is attack these butt joints and put a second coat on them using this large 16 by 4 and a half inch trowel. So we'll start by scooping up our mud and we'll get this moving. So I need to load up the hot very well. This is the technique coat. This is the most difficult coat to do. So if you can get a handle on it, you've got a maze to be able to take care of your own drywall needs. So let's load up. Again, the mud control is very important. Let's load up this trowel and load up that butt joint down here. I'm loading up the whole thing. You saw the way that was done? Go to the bottom and as you're coming up, you're flattening the trowel out. Now I've got the mud. Let's go around some more and let's load it up again. Right up to that joint. The other side the same way. And then what we do is reduce a little bit at a time. So that means I'm not going to travel right up to take a lot of mud away all at once. I'm just going to press on the tip of the trowel to feather it off. So I borrow mud. I'm going to feather it off against the board. Go back to this side. Pour some mud. I want to bring it down a little lower. And I'm pressing on the back of the trowel to feather it off there. Now I'll take a swipe up the center. Now there's a bunch of little bubbles and little lines and stuff in this, in this joint. But the tape is hidden. So the job of the first coat is glue down the tape. The job of the second coat is hide the tape. So I'll go back. And because I'm laying this trowel down, I can go over it many times without taking all my mud away. And we're going to call that the second coat. The tape is not seen through that coat, which is absolutely perfect. The finished coat, the job is to take away bubbles, lines, and everything left in the second coat. So, I'll grab some more mud, we're going to quickly do that jump and the one over my head. So, I might as well go out. I'm going to give myself enough mud to work with. So move it around a little bit, you'll take a few little bubbles and stuff out of the mud by mixing it or moving it around. So, let's do this one. Front hand this time. So, upside down, load the whole thing. Come in, and we're leaving the mud there. I'm laying this trowel down, even though I'm pushing hard, I'm actually laying it down. So I'm satisfied with the amount of mud loaded up, now it's reduced time. So I'm going to press mostly at this end, the tip end of my trowel. Feathers it off against the board. Now I'm going to press mostly at the back of my trowel. Feathers it off against the board. Last swipe is the center. Now there is a draw line here of mud, another draw line there. No big deal, we just do a little scrape before we finish coat and we continue on from there. So organize my mud. <coughs> and we'll get a bit of this butt joint in the ceiling. Now, they've been flattened out. That was part of the, pros of the, the procedure on the first coat. So, it makes this coat a little easier. I'm just scraping away any little bit of mud. It's been sanded. That's it. So, let's load up this trowel. Let's get this ceiling joint down. So, I'm leaving the mud on nice and thick, and I go at least to the taper joint that crosses it. Now on the back of the trowel, I just loaded up the back because we're so close to the corner, that's all I needed there. And now, press the tip against this side when I do this side, press the back tip against that side, put pressure on that side. So we go back, bore mud, bring it back into the corner. Here the same way, bring it back into the corner, it squares it up. Now the tip's getting pressed. And the back of the trowel is getting pressed, and then I'll take a swipe for the whole thing. Now, any imperfections in this coat, you don't have to get that picky because the finished coat takes it out. Those are three butt joints done for you. Now I put this trowel down. Normally, what you do is you go around the uh, whole basement or your whole project, and you get all the butt joints first. It gives them a chance to set up before you cross them at the factory joints. So, here's my other trowel. I'll show you how this works. It's a very, very similar procedure, except it's a little trowel, and you don't have to go as wide because the tape sunk into the tapered part of the joint. So, I will grab some more mud. And the first joint you're going to do in this corner is the one going forward. So it's this one here where my knuckles are going to hit this wall going forward that we want to do first. So I loaded up properly the whole thing. I'm laying it down to leave them up there. Loaded up some more. I want to go a long ways with this joint. As long as possible anyways. So there it's nice and thick. 
doesn't look that great yet, but again, we do have a reduction. So tip of the trowel, back tip of the trowel. Both of them went to get the corner filled up. Flex the top tip, feathers it off. Flex the bottom tip, put pressure on the back of your handle, and keep that trowel laying down. Don't tip it up too much. This way here you can go many times over without taking on your mother weight. That trowel is laying down really, really good. And all I do is keep reducing it. And I'm pressing against the top. And then the whole thing rakes in. And I'm having that trowel rake right down. That's as smooth as it needs to get. There are a couple little draw lines and bubbles in that. Not a big deal at all because the finished coat, that's the job of the finished coat. So don't get any pickier than that. Now I'll just do a, a little bit of a backhand on this one here. Uh, just to bring it to the end of the joint. Now, we won't go over those joints right now because I haven't given them maybe half an hour to set up so that we don't make cut lines in those joints when we go to do this joint going across. So that's why we let them set up a little bit. So, back of the trowel, we'll just come to the edge of that joint. That's on the back end. And we just came to the edge there. Now I'll go back, borrow mud, bring it back to the corner. Now, tip is flexed against the board. Bottom tip is flexed against the board. And then, break flat for the whole thing. It does not need to get any prettier than that in this coat. That is the job of the second coat, hide that tape. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with these butt joints and taper joints at this point. I'm not gonna run around the room to do it, but in the next segment, you'll see me doing these inside corners and the screws. And I'll show you the techniques on that. Bye for now. I'm Larry Desarmo and I'm back. This is the Art Tape and Drywall. This is a six inch knife that's used for second coat on the screws. When you buy your six inch knife, if you lay it against the wall, you'll see an arc in it. That allows you to leave a layer of mud on your screws without leaving edges on the other sides. Technique, very similar to the second coat, except it's a bigger knife and there's more flexing involved. So, that's all I did was load up the mud this way on the screw. It's a combination of flex and lay down to determine how you leave mud on these screws without leaving edges on the outsides. Now, if you do leave a little bit of edges on the outsides, the finished coat, which is done with the trowel, take some of that away anyways. So there will be no sanding on these screws before the next coat. Now as a professional taper, I'm going to quickly run across this wall and do these, these screws in a professional taper kind of speed. So on and off. And there was a chunk of mud. I'll take it away and repeat. Repeat. Um, the edges of the window we won't worry about as much anymore. But let's just quickly go through, and this way here, there's a layer of mud on these screws without edges on the two sides, and as you can tell, it moves very well, and it's the same technique used as we used in the four, except we're going a little larger and a little wider. So, I'll just quickly get these, and when we get back to the other corner, we're going to do some inside edges, which is those inside corners, when I get to the corner where my left is. So, now I have all the screws. This is how I buy time on my jobs for my butt joints to set up. I go and do all my butt joints first. I go around and do all my screws next. It gives them a chance to set up so that I can cross these joints before I get on to the next step. So while I'm loading a six inch knife, you know how it works. It is a matter of flex. Flex and what you lay it down, that leaves the mud in the middle and tapers off the two sides. That's what we're looking for. So, putting this away, my inside corners are done with a four inch knife. Again, the techniques with the four inch knife are the same. It's all about making that little triangle deal. So, it's all the same, depending where we need the mud. Now, what we wanted up here is a matter of one, one tape away from the other, so one joint away from the other. The ceiling taper joints are going across this way. So those factory taper joints are going this way. That's the corner I want to do first. So again, this should be set for me. Even though it's not, we're going to do it anyways. Because I know how to fix it later. Which I'll be showing you on the finished coat. 
So it's loaded up really, really well. There's bubbles and lines in it. This is more of a finish because there isn't another coat that goes on this afterwards. I will make a repair of that little line that I'm making across my butt joints just because I didn't get the time to set. There's the start of that. That's the peculiar angle. Now, coming up to it, we will be doing the wall angle. And I do my little triangle load up again. And bring it right down. We're just going to stop at the joint itself. And then flex the tip of my knife against the drywall. Do a cleaning wipe on that side. Now square up my knife. So, square it up. Not much overflow onto the other side to get into the way of our next coat. That's nice for that angle. That's all we need to do with it. It is very smooth. Now, as you can tell, there's the one at the ceiling, the one at the wall, this one here. So they didn't actually overlap each other, they met each other. And on the finished coat, we do the exact opposite of what we just did here. We take the opposite corners. So I'll put a little bit of mud, come back, and I'll skim the bottom part of my knife against the board. Come back up. And we'll get it again. Now, the job here is to hide that tape. That's nice and smooth, the tape is hidden. I'm very satisfied with that being my finish because at one side, that is my finish. When these joints set up, we'll come up with the angles and go right across the joint so that we're not cutting lines like I did with this butt joint. That gives me a spot to give a coat to on my finished coat to repair where to cut a line because we didn't give it, a, give it enough setting time. In a small room and you have to work, you just go anyways and you repair things as you go. Um, at this point, I think I'm going to give you, I'll uh, pick up a trowel. There's one corner bead, and these are bullnose corner beads in the closet. I'm going to show you with my trowel how the second coat goes on bullnose. You load it up a little differently. So we might as well do a little length of it here in the closet. Being bullnose, putting mud on and coming down makes mud stick to this edge a lot. So instead of doing it that way, when you work with bullnose, what you need to do is load your mud in this form. And if you just take it and load it up nice and thick in that form, and then organize my mud, and I'll just go with the tip of the trowel and load up the mud to square up the top of it. I'll do it again to make sure I've got enough mud up there. And then the tip, I'm pushing hard. And now I'm keeping that trowel laying down pretty good and coming across that bead. Now look at the overflow onto that corner bead. So that's why we didn't load it up that way, but this is all it takes for it to go away. And we're all cleaned up from bone nose bead. I'll show you what happens if you try to load it the same way we do the square corners. You'll see how much mud ends up on that bead and how much extra coating we have. Now take a look at the mud on that bead. A lot more than if or than, than the other procedure where I loaded them up differently. So it's kind of the same, but look, this doesn't clean off with one wipe. And it's not bad with two, but it's still a little dirty. So there's just more cleaning up to do afterwards if you don't take that procedure of loading it up the way I showed you the first time around. Um, this is the lesson on the second coat. This is as far as we need to go for now. You'll find me back for the finished coat and how to deal with all these parts again in the finished coat another day. Laurie Desarmo signing off. Good morning. My name is Laurie Desarmo and this is the Art of Taping Drywall. We're back for the finished coat of the butt joints, taper joints, screws, and in the second clip will be inside corners or angles and a little shot on the corner bead that's here in the room. Now I spoke to you in the second coat about these little draw lines that we make and the camera's not going to pick that up too well for us so I'll just show you what I do with them. I don't stand between coats but these little draw lines are high spots the four inch knife and I scrape it away and that's it for the sanding on that. There's one on this side, I just feel for it and it's cleaned up. Same with the paper trunk with the two mat, there's draw lines in here. So all these are, are high spots and I just took the high spots away. Might as well prepare this, much like do. There goes that draw line. You can push on the knife to do it. I just find that holding it this way it up does the trick best for me. Now there's no high spots there now, so what we 
we're going to do is we're going to pick up the trowel and we're going to cook two white joints right now and show you how that's done. Now you don't use the big trowel for this job. A small trowel does a trick for all the finished coat on the joints. You don't need the big trowel anymore. That was used for the butt joints on the second go. So here's the remote control techniques in here. Moving them around. And we'll start with this little short one here. So upside down, the hop goes. Load it up. And I'm going to go an inch or two wider again. For the middle of the joint, load it up. I'm laying it down as I'm going up. And then just make sure it's all covered. Now on this coat, you're not leaving mud there, so you will tilt your trowel up. So we'll start with the edge and put pressure right at the tip of the trowel. It's tilted up pretty high and feathers it off against the board on that side. The back, I put pressure on it feathered off that side. So any edges have disappeared now. Now we'll tilt up higher for the center and that skins out all imperfections, any lines, any bubbles, any waving in the mud work itself. Come back and do that one. Come back and tilt up and do that one. That's actually perfectly smooth to a point that sanding is just a matter of wiping, not scrubbing your guts out and making a lot of dust. So we'll quickly grab this one here too. And I'll grab the screws that are right beside it at the same time. So near a plug, I'll just go up so that we're not filling that plug box full. And I'll go down. That loads up those screws beside that butt joint. Now we do the butt joint itself and fill it up like we did that first one. And over to the center, and same deal. Now I wanted to take it halfway into the joint at the top. Now, on the edge where there's a screw, I'm tilted up really, really, and really high and tilted up nice and strong and pushing really hard for this coat. Now the next one, skim, against the drywall, and that borrows mud to go to this end of the butt joint and load it up. You know, there's little ball spots in here, I want them 